when it comes to answering the question of what causes OCD, the simple answer is that OCD is caused by a mix of genetic and environmental factors, which are then compounded by the decisions we make every single day. That was simple, right? There just isn't a single concrete answer to that question. It really is a complex mixture and the interplay between nature and nurture, both in the past and then in the decisions you're making right now. Even researchers have tried to find a specific gene they could target uh, as responsible for OCD, but those studies have turned up inconclusive results. Sometimes the studies into the genetic sources of mental health challenges only s prove that learned factors play just as big a role. For instance, one study on the serotonin transporter gene variant of 5-HTTP that's often implicated in having low levels of serotonin and people, some people like to look at it, researchers like to look at it uh, as a source of mental health challenges. One study that you'll find linked below found that it's not as simple as that. In fact, having that particular variant of the serotonin transporter gene was linked to having a higher incidence of mental illness, but was also linked with having a higher incidence of being exceptionally mentally healthy. What they found, the difference between those two groups were, were what they learned from their parents. So there you have a genetic factor that makes people susceptible to mental illness, but also makes them susceptible to being mentally healthy. And the difference there is the healthy or unhealthy habits they learn from their parents. So there you can see this complex interplay between nature and nurture. Sometimes it's in our nature to be nurtured. Whether that nurturing is healthy or unhealthy is really the question there. But at the same time, lots of people who don't have that particular variant of the serotonin transporter gene still develop OCD. So again, we're back to it's really complex. Now as complex as it is, there is one particular myth I'd like to get taken care of and pushed out of the way, and that is the chemical imbalance myth. So OCD is not caused by a chemical imbalance in your brain. The chemical imbalance myth is incredibly persistent and pervasive, but it's simply not true. It's just hung around because again, it's, it's a simple answer to a complex problem. We love simple answers. We love to be sure. It's very easy to say, hey, you know what? It's a chemical imbalance up there. I mean, I've got eight of one and 11 of the other, and that's causing me to... Okay, so I only bring up that myth so we can get it out of the way. You don't have a chemical imbalance. A chemical imbalance is not the cause of your OCD. Researchers have been pretty upfront for a long time that they didn't know why SSRIs worked. They knew you could have really high levels of serotonin and be depressed. They knew you could have really low levels of serotonin and not be depressed and not have an OCD and not have other problems. So they weren't exactly sure why, because they did know that, hey, when you give people SSRIs, things happen. Recent research has found that the reason SSRIs are an effective part of treatment for OCD when combined with behavioral therapy is because SSRIs boost neuroplasticity in the brain. So that's improving the brain's ability to rewire itself, which is of course what you're doing when you're doing behavioral therapy and you're unlearning the unhealthy behaviors that are exacerbating your OCD and you're learning new healthy behaviors as a response to anxiety and other things going on in your head. But one of the reasons why the chemical imbalance myth is so persistent and so popular is because it gives us the opportunity to blame something we have no control over. Say, oh look, it's these chemicals in my brain, I have an imbalance, it's not my fault, and there's nothing I can do about it. That's very attractive. And that's the last thing I wanna talk about, which is this need to blame and be certain and assign responsibility for illness. It's really, really not important and it's really unhelpful when it comes to recovery. It does not matter how you got to where you are. All that matters is how you're gonna get out of here. When we have an anxiety disorder, we really wanna be certain about things. In many ways, an anxiety disorder is about having an unhealthy relationship with certainty and constantly trying to avoid uncertainty in the world, constantly trying to avoid experiencing negative emotions. So of course, when we're confronted with an uncertainty, like how did I get OCD? We automatically, compulsively wanna answer that question and we wanna be certain and we wanna desperately make sure that it is not our responsibility for this negative thing that's happened. That's really unhelpful at the same time, it's totally part of the illness, so it's completely understandable. If you clicked on this video 
uh, and you're not doing a essay or a research paper for a school class, chances are you probably clicked on it because you want to know what caused OCD and you want to be certain and you're really hoping that the answer is not going to be you. And it's way more complicated than that. Right? If you're a parent who's watching this video and you desperately want to know that you're not responsible for your son or your daughter's OCD, well again, it's, it's much more complicated than that. What's important is not who's responsible for OCD. It doesn't matter who we're going to blame for that. Right? Like, it's just set it aside. What's important is not who's responsible for OCD. What's important is who's going to be responsible for recovery. And the answer to that is you. It really doesn't matter how you got to where you are. Focusing on the past is not going to help you move into the future. All that matters is being responsible for your recovery.